One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T-Pow, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing something a lot different than normal. I'm going to be trying new beauty and skincare products that I've never tried before. So keep in mind when you watch the video that these thoughts and opinions are just coming from your average consumer with not much prior knowledge about the products. So with that context in mind, here's the first product. So the first thing I wanted to try was a tinted moisturizer. And I've never tried one because I pretty much went from not wearing any foundation at all to wearing like a full face of makeup. And I never had anything in between. And the reason I wanted to try it is because now that I vlog pretty regularly, I don't like the idea of having to get up in the morning and put on a bunch of makeup just to look not dead. I look like I could possibly be a corp. You know, it's kind of like is she dead? Is she not? It's like keeps them guessing. But I would like to look a little bit more alive in the morning when I vlog. After doing some research, I decided to get the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. Even though it's called a moisturizer, I've learned from my research that tinted moisturizers are basically just very low coverage foundations, apparently, and they might not actually be very moisturizing. So I think to give this the best chance possible, I'm going to put some moisturizer on and then apply it. So for my moisturizer, I'm using Tula Dew D-E-W, your thing. This is the moisturizer I like to use in the morning because it's very thin and it goes very well under makeup if I do choose to wear makeup. Okay, now I'm going to try the tinted moisturizer. I got the shade Light 6W. Honestly, it looks very close to my foundation, so it should work. All right, here goes. So far, so good. Need a little more for my forehead. I did wash my hands, by the way. So in the mirror, in person, it looks very natural. I think that it really like evened out my skin and just like made me look like a human, which is the goal. That's what I wanted. On camera, I'm not sure that it made a huge difference in the quality of my appearance. I don't know if it's just the lighting in here. All right, so now I'm in the living room, kind of near the window with sunlight. And honestly, I think it really did the trick. I am glad I came out here to look at the different lighting because honestly, that room has like the worst lighting. Now, the only thing is I've had it on for three to four minutes and it's still sticky. So I'm guessing that I should use a powder to set it. I'm gonna use one of my cheaper powders that I'm able to get at Target, which is the CoverGirl Clean Professional. I don't use this when I record videos. Now you're gonna make fun of me because I like it because it has a poof. <laughs> But I like it because then I don't need to have like a bunch of brushes. Like this is all like a self-contained thing. So I don't, the, the goal here is to have like an everyday simple five minute makeup thing that I can do just for vlogging. I think it looks good. I don't mind that I have to use powder. Not a big deal. Still like a two minute process. And I think this is very affordable. Um, I don't remember what it costs, but I'll put it up on the screen. My only complaint is I wish I had found one that I could get at like a drugstore or Target, but obviously I can try one in the future. But if you guys have any suggestions for a tinted moisturizer that would be sold at like a Target, I would love to hear them. All right, welcome to somewhere you've probably never been my bathroom. My goal is to try three new products this evening, a scalp scrub, hard wax, and then after I torture myself, I'm going to pamper myself with a bunch of different masks for places on my body other than my face. For my scalp, I'm trying this very popular product that I am suddenly seeing everywhere, the Drunk Elephant TLC Happy Scalp Scrub. Apparently, it's some sort of acid blend designed to break down and dissolve dead skin cells and styling product buildup. So I first saw this product in Taylor R's Tay Tay's video where she did a bunch of different beauty treatments. Because I watch all of her videos, loyal fan, I know that she's talked about scalp health before because in Asia, 
they definitely know a lot more about skincare than we seem to over here in the US. And I feel like a lot of the skincare trends that we end up doing come from Korea or other Asian countries where they just seem to have perfect skin and we want to know their secrets. So if Tay Tay says to use this, then I'm going to use it. So like I said, what I've learned from her is that scalp health is really important to hair health. And it makes a lot of sense, but I feel like the scalp is something none of us really think about unless we get dandruff or it's really itchy. And I think we're realizing we need to take care of our scalp just the way we take care of our face and our body and all of the other skin that we have. Because hair health really does start at the roots. So the instructions for this are before showering when hair is dry, apply directly to a dry scalp and massage. Allow to sit for 10 minutes. Use one to two times per week. So if I did end up liking this, I could use it whenever I wash my hair, which is two times a week. It says it may also be used on body, but like I don't know where on my body I would use it. I feel like it's too expensive for that. This was $36. All right, I will confess I did open it to see what this looked like. And it's basically a nozzle that you can use to go directly like through your hair onto your scalp so that you're not wasting product in your hair. I think it's hard to know how much I should actually be applying. I feel like there could be a little bit more guidance about the amount. I feel like giving yourself a little scalp massage once a week, it couldn't hurt even if you don't put product in your hair. Now that it's been like sitting in my hair, I have to say it doesn't smell great, but I have mixed feelings about that because I feel like a lot of products with fragrance are not always good for you. And because I'm applying this directly to my scalp, like it might not be a good thing to have like a fragrance on my scalp. All right, I realize you can't tell I did anything except for how my hair is now sticking out because it's got some of the cream in it. But I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and I'm gonna rinse off in the shower. It does say to use shampoo and conditioner, so I will. And then we'll see if there's any kind of noticeable difference in my scalp. All right, I'm out of the shower and I'm gonna let you know how the scalp scrub went. But in the meantime, while my hair is drying, I'm going to try the hard wax. The difference between regular at-home wax and hard wax is that Hard wax is meant to be put onto your skin and then you do not need like paper strips to put on top of it. You literally just wait till the wax hardens and then you rip the whole thing off at once. So the major benefit for me is that I create less waste because I'm not using paper each time and I don't have to buy as many materials to actually do it. The machine that I chose is just a cheap machine from Amazon and it has this large wax bowl, but I liked this one because it also comes with these smaller wax containers so that if you're just doing a small part of your face like I'm about to, you don't have to use as much wax. It also came with four of these bags, three and a half ounces of the wax beans, which will last me a really, really long time because I don't plan on doing any large areas. I mostly plan on doing this on my face. So I'm gonna let the wax warm up and then I'm going to attempt anyway to wax my unibrow and my mustache. So I'm gonna bring you in close to see the before. So <laughs> prepare yourself. And then this is my unibrow, which isn't that bad. So I apologize if it was hard to see my mustache because it honestly doesn't get that dark. So in the past, I used to bleach my mustache. I started that very young because my mom taught me how to do it pretty young because she did it like her whole life. And then once I started wearing foundation, I have had to start shaving the mustache. So I bought one of those little face razors that are like this wide and they're like very gentle. And then I started doing the unibrow with that as well. And that's my current method. The myth is not true. If you shave your mustache, it won't come back coarser and darker because I've been doing it since my early 20s, so like seven years, and it's barely visible on camera, even at its longest. Let's wax it off and see how that goes. Okay, so here's what the wax looks like melted. I have two of these in here because I was using one of them to hold it while I stirred it. Okay, oh! So I have some of the wax, and I'm just going to put it on the back of my hand to make sure it's not too hot, like it won't burn me. And it's a comfortable temperature. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, here we go. I really should be using a mirror. Should I do like the whole thing and then pull it off or like do one side? I hope it's thick enough. It's so stringy, is that normal? It feels really good. 
putting it on. People who have done this, sorry, I can barely move my lip. Tell me if it's normal to be this stringy. All right, so now I'm gonna rip it off against the direction of the hair growth. Ooh, the corner, ouch. All right, I need to get a little bit of a grip. So I need to peel some off slow and it hurts. It hurts so bad already. All right, I think I got a good amount and I'm hoping it comes off all at once. Not this side, but just this side. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> oh man. Ooh. <laughs> wow. It got everything. So you know how like if you do a pore strip on your nose and you pit take it off, you get to look at all the like little blackheads? That's what this is like, but with hair. That's crazy. It stings. <laughs> All right, but at least it all came off at once, which was my fear was I was gonna have to do like multiple. Okay, now let's do this side. Now that I know what it feels like, I'm really scared. I need to do it with this hand. The worst part is peeling off a little bit to start. I think next time I'll do like extra. One, two, three. It's worse now that I know what it feels like. Okay. One, two, three. <gasps> Painful, but so effective. I guess that's why it's painful. <laughs> All right, I put some in the middle because I couldn't get the little tiny pieces off. So I gotta do this one now. <gasps> oh, ow! <laughs> oh my God, there's so many hairs just in the middle. Who knew? I'm not gonna chicken out. Ow, a little hot. That one was a little hot. <laughs> Look crazy. I don't think this one's gonna hurt as bad, but that could just be wishful thinking. I just think it's less sensitive than the mustache area. One. Two, three. Yeah, that one barely hurt. It did a really good job, except I did not get the wax right here. So there's still some hair. In fact, I think you might be able to see it. So if you can see right here. So I'm gonna put a little bit on either side. I got a mirror to do it effectively. So that's my fault for not going low enough, but normally I'd be using a mirror and would get the whole thing. These are like the longest hairs of the whole thing. So. I'm a little scared. Okay. Ah! It worked! It honestly didn't even hurt that bad. Probably because it was a smaller area. Oh! I'm very impressed with the results. If I could get away with doing this like once a month, I have to look up like how long this will last. Totally worth it. It's smoother than when I shave it. And if I wasn't recording, it would have been like six minutes for that to heat up and five minutes to do it. Like less than 15 minutes. I am very satisfied with that purchase and the machine was under $30. I'll link it below. If I did this once a month, like I'm looking at, I've got two years, over two years worth of wax just from this machine for under $30 but I think this was a great success and I'm gonna use it whenever needed but I'm gonna do a face mask and cool it all off but that's a perfect segue into our next category which is masks so this year I've really gotten away from buying single-use sheet masks and now I buy masks that are like in a tube and like it's just the mask you don't have a sheet you just put it directly on your face back when I used to buy sheet masks I would only ever buy them from places that had them on clearance because I never wanted to spend more than a dollar for a mask so this is one of the things i bought on clearance that i thought was interesting it's called the 15 minute pamper me kit for instant glow but the reason i found it interesting is because not only does it contain face sheet masks but it also has eye hand and foot masks so i was like i need to try this because i've never done a mask for anything other than my face it also has a hair mask, but I have done that before, so we're not gonna do that in this video. But these are the three I want to do today. So for the eye mask, it says cleanse and apply toner. So I'm gonna go apply toner and I'll be right back. So here's what they look like. I hope it's obvious which side goes on my face. See, this is why I don't like sheet masks anymore, because the package is plastic, then this is plastic, and then there's another piece of plastic on top of them. It's so much plastic. And there's a piece of plastic underneath them. All right, here goes the first one. All right, it's stuck on there. They're interesting, they're like a gel. They're like a jelly, a thin jelly material. They're very cooling, which I like under my eyes. I think everyone does. Next has to be the foot mask, because once I put the hand mask on, all bets are off. This is the foot shape, I totally see it. I was worried it was gonna be messy, but it looks to be all contained inside. I kind of love this. 
If that doesn't get me on wiki feet, I don't know what will. All right, lastly, the hand mask, which I assume is gonna look like a glove. It looks like a glove. Oh, maybe I should take my ring off. I have to say the initial, like, sliding your hand or your foot into something wet is not a feeling I love, but then once it's in there, it's, like, weirdly soothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why am I Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I love the way it feels on my feet. I have to be honest. And my face feels nice and cool. You gotta go three at once. So now I have to start a timer. Hey Siri, start a timer for 15 minutes. Your timer is set for 15 minutes. Nice. All right, I'll see you in 15 minutes. So I was reading the instructions on the hand mask to figure out my exit strategy here. And it says, place hands inside the mask and relax for 25 to 30 minutes. Even though everywhere else on the package it says 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And the foot mask says the same thing. I'm looking at almost a half hour of not using my hands. Alright, with a few minutes left to go, this eye thing started falling off of my eye and I did my best to like put it back on my eye but then I poked myself in the eye because this is longer than my actual finger so it's just time to take the eye things off I'm just gonna peel these bad boys off and this is to pat in the excess which to be honest there isn't much because it was dry enough that it was like starting to slide off my face all right time is officially up so you can see all the excess lotion, but I'm gonna rub some in and pull some up my arm. But for the feet, I need a towel. All right, so same thing. I'm not doing this on camera, but I'm rubbing the excess into my foot and kind of up my leg a little bit. So what's interesting is without using a pumice stone or anything scratchy on my foot, I definitely softened my heel by a lot. They're still not perfect, but I feel like I could go after this mask and use the pumice stone and it would come off a lot easier. My hands feel super soft. My under eyes do feel kind of firm. I don't know if that's in my head, but you know, you can tell when like your skin feels firmer than normal and mine definitely does. As far as my thoughts on the sheet masks, I thought it was a really nice experience, but it's not something that I would want to do all the time if I had to buy these single use types of masks. There's a lot of foot lotions that you can buy that you can use in conjunction with socks overnight and it can sit on your foot for eight hours as opposed to this which is 25 minutes. But if there was a version I could buy that had gloves and socks, which I know they make socks, they must make gloves by now, where I could just put on a lotion and put my hands in the gloves and they were reusable and washable perhaps, I would be super into this and very inclined to do it. Same for the eye mask. I'm really interested to know if they make something that is reusable. I'm pretty sure they're starting to make reusable sheet masks. I would be really into a reusable version of it. Last thing for tonight, we have to see how my scalp is doing. All right, so I don't know if... I'm going to be able to notice a difference after one use of the scalp scrub, but I will say off the bat, by touching my scalp, it weirdly feels like really clean. Like, have you ever used a crappy shampoo maybe in a hotel and your hair just doesn't feel clean and then you go back to your normal shampoo and it feels really clean? That's how I feel right now. My scalp feels very smooth and almost fresh like in a way that I've never experienced before. And I think with this product, it's hard to come to a definite conclusion after one use if it's like super effective because I think this is something that it like works over time and as you like pay more attention to your scalp, you'll see more differences in your hair. But I'll say the initial reaction is positive. What I think I'll do is I'll add it to my hair routine but only once a week and then I'll use it for three months or until it runs out, whichever comes first. And then I'll update you guys in a vlog to say if I've noticed any sort of difference like that's actually like tangible but I would be interested to see if there are any cheaper alternatives because so far I've only ever seen the drunk elephant one I feel like not a lot of companies care or have jumped on the like scalp care trend but that's all I can handle tonight I'll see you tomorrow so tonight I'm gonna do the last two remaining products I'll be starting with the scarier of the two which is 
self tanner. I feel like there could not be a more perfect time to try something that could be potentially embarrassing than a time when I barely leave the house. So this is the Saint Tropez. Tropez, I don't know. I chose it because Molly Burke likes this brand and it was one of the cheapest and smallest options on Sephora. It came with a mitt. I do love the color and it's one of the softest things I've ever felt. So I want to like use this for other things besides self tanner, but I feel like once the self tanner gets on it, it's going to be ruined. So I'm going to just enjoy it for a little bit. So on the back, it says one hour is light, two hours is medium, three hours is dark. I'm going to be leaving it on for one hour. This is our first time and we should start slow. Patch test 24 hours before use. I didn't do that. Where are the instructions? Are they on the little bottle? Hold on, let me get my magnifying glass. Where are the instructions? Wh what do I do? So I just watched a two minute YouTube video from the Saint Tropez Tropez channel and apparently I'm just supposed to put this on and then wait an hour and then rinse it off. So it's not that bad. So ideally, if I was doing this and not on camera, I would be wearing some kind of strapless bikini, but obviously because this is the internet, I'm wearing this instead. But do understand that I recognize this is not the ideal. All right, so I guess this is going to be a mousse. It literally looks like whipped coffee. And we are about to pass the point of no return. <gasps> Okay, so first of all, smells amazing. Oh, I did my armpit by accident. Am I not supposed to? Does it look darker? It does in person. Ooh, you can tell right there, like where my arm meets my chest. Ooh. <laughs> the only part of my body that people are gonna be able to see is like right here and I screwed it up. <laughs> While I'm rubbing this all over myself, I guess I should explain why I wanted to try this. And to be honest, it's because of getting married. I'm not getting married for two years, but I think about how I want to look on that day. I don't really love the idea of tanning in the sun anymore because I know what damage it can do to your body. And honestly, the thought of like horrible tan lines with a wedding dress is not the vibe. So I wanted to give this a try far in advance of the wedding so that if I do like how it looks, I can experiment with it a little bit so that it's an option for my wedding slash honeymoon to be like, just have a little bit, a little bit of a sun-kissed, like sun-kissed is the perfect word. I'm not trying to look super fake tan, like I don't want it to be obvious that I have a fake tan, but I do want to have less of like a pale white body in my wedding photos and I don't think that's asking too much. So I'm gonna finish up off camera. All right so while my self tan sits on I'm going to try a gua sha stone. So if you've never heard of this this is like the sister to the jade roller. In fact when I bought my jade roller like I don't know how long ago this came with it and I didn't know what to do with it and I kind of just put it away and didn't think about it. But recently I was revamping my skincare routine and I was trying to find a few different treatments that I could do once a week or things that I didn't have to do every day but could do once in a while besides like a face mask or exfoliating. And that's when I came across the Gua Sha Stone. And I was like, I think I have one of those. So I dug it out and I'm gonna try it for the first time today. So what I've heard about the Gua Sha Stone is it's meant to reduce inflammation and de-bloat your face. Basically push water out of your face that's been sitting there that might make your face look puffy. So what I would like to do for this video is I would like to show you my face, which I've been doing obviously, but I'm going to do this only on one side of my face and we're going to see if we can notice a difference. The only thing you need besides the stone is some sort of oil. It can be literally any facial oil. I forgot that I would need oil, but luckily I have a sample of oil from Tarte that I got from reordering my mascara. So I'm gonna grab that and we'll get started. All right, so I'm gonna be using this sample of Tarte Mara Kuja. I almost said Mara Juka oil. So we only have one shot at this because I only have one sample. So the reason you want to use oil is because you want the stone to glide across your skin and not tug on your skin. Now I'm also putting it on my neck because the massage actually begins on the neck. Alright, so this is my face before. 
So I'm only going to do the right side and then we'll see if there's a difference. So first I'm going to take this part and I'm just going to start going up. Ooh. Up the side of my neck, which I don't know why is the most amazing feeling. I must have a tight spot like right there and it's just, ooh. Why is this thing better than like our massager that we own. So what I saw the most for each area is to do it five to ten times. So I've been keeping count in my head. I did that one spot like 20. So, <laughs> But I'm slowly making my way to the front of my neck. And now I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go down. Okay, now that I'm done with the neck, I'm going to move on to the actual face. So... <laughs> getting the self tanner on the stone which is probably not a good thing well anyway I'm going to move on to the face so next I'm gonna do my jawline and I'm gonna use again this V to go right along my jawline and we're gonna do this again five to ten times all right next I'm gonna do the same type of motion but I'm gonna do it on my cheekbone starting on my nose. I feel like this would be really good to drain your sinuses which is something I definitely struggle with like I do nasal rinses and everything that's a trip if you've never done one of those and I'm bringing this baby like straight up to the hair like I'm doing the whole shebang so in that previous movement I was using this indent on my actual cheekbone but what I can also go back and do now is once I find my cheekbone which is right here I can go with the curved flat side under my cheekbone and the idea here being to carve out the area under the cheekbone. The next move I'm going to do is for under the eye and the the orbital bone, um, that whole area. So again I'm going to hold it the same way I just was for this area except I'm going to start right under my eye like this. For this one it's important not to use too much pressure because it is your eye. All right, next I'm going to work on the area between my eyebrows and along my brow bone. So I'm going to start with the V and I'm going to basically trace like this part of my nose up along my brow bone. So I know this is gross, but earlier I mentioned my sinus and right now I can feel only this side of my nose, my sinuses are draining from using this. And for someone like me who has a lot of sinus issues, if this wasn't even for skincare and it was just for draining sinuses, like I would use it. Cause it's literally happening and I need to go blow my nose. All right, so next is the forehead. So I'm gonna go back in with this long curved edge and I'm going to start right above my eyebrow and go towards my hairline. And that's it. I enjoyed it, especially right here. I think that was the best part. I don't even have pain in my neck anymore. Like I always seem to have pain in my neck and this got rid of it. So somehow this tiny little stone is not only for a natural facelift, it relieves your sinus pressure and gives you a neck massage. So needless to say, I'm sold regardless of if there's been a change in my face. But now that I look at my face, I have to say this side looks less puffy than this side. We do have the video evidence to compare, so let's see. Obviously, I won't see this until I'm editing it, but you'll have to comment down below if you felt there was a change. Looking at my own face, I think this side looks a lot more, I don't want to use the word skinny, but it looks less puffy and a little bit more defined than this side. I think I'm definitely going to incorporate this into my weekly skincare routine. So I am officially promoting it from the back of my cabinet into my weekly skincare box which is a great honor, except I'm gonna clean it first, obviously. That was just ceremonial. All right, so I'm out of the shower and I also did my nighttime skincare routine. And here is my tan body. It looks pretty much the same. So my final thoughts on this little experiment are a few things. First of all, I think that there needs to be more and clearer instructions on these 
products. The two examples that I would use are the self tanner, for sure, since there were no directions at all. In my opinion, things like that should at least have some guidance on how to use the product. I shouldn't have to go to a brand's YouTube channel to get the most basic minimum instructions on what to do with it. That should be somewhere on the package, especially for something that can be as permanent as self tanner. I didn't have a great result with the self tanner and that could be because I did not exfoliate 24 hours before using it, but I would not have even known that was a thing if I didn't seek that information from outside sources. It shouldn't be my responsibility as the customer to go look up that information on YouTube because I don't even know if I'm getting it from a credible source and I would prefer it to come from the package itself. So I would say that was the most disappointing of the products. The scalp scrub is still a toss up because I don't think it's something that you'll really see effects with after one use and I really think it needs long term usage to really know if it's effective or not, but I would have appreciated a little bit more guidance on that, specifically how much to use on my scalp. I feel like that wouldn't be asking too much because a lot of things I use will say a dime-sized amount or a quarter-sized amount. They'll give you some idea of how much you should be using, so not only is it hard to know if it was effective after just one use, I also don't even know if I used enough or if I used too much. The tinted moisturizer pretty much spoke for itself and I will continue to use it, but I'm not just comment baiting. I really wanna know if anyone has any suggestions for a cheaper one that I can buy in a drugstore as opposed to having something mailed to me every time I need a new one. I think I made my thoughts pretty clear on the masks in that I enjoyed them, but I really can't get behind a product that creates so much waste for something that's so unnecessary and so frivolous. So I'm probably gonna spend some time looking into alternatives because it's a very soothing and relaxing thing to do that feels like a treat, but it's not worth the amount of waste it creates, so I would need to find an alternative. I saved my two favorites for last, which I have to say were the Hard Wax and the Gua Sha Stone. I feel like these two gave me my biggest bang for my buck. That wax machine was under $20. I know I kept saying it was under $30, but I looked back and it was actually under $20. Even though it was painful, it was very effective, it did exactly what it was supposed to do, and it met all of my expectations. But I think the Gua Sha Stone might be my favorite because of how surprised I was by how much that little stone could do. When I came up with the original idea for this video, that wasn't even a part of it, but in my skincare research, I came across it and realized I owned one, and I was like, I might as well include it. I think my ex expectations were so low for it in that I had like no expectations whatsoever that for it to be like a neck massager, a sinus pressure reliever, and like an instant facelift, I was kind of blown away. And you can't really deny that you can tell there's a difference in my face from before and after using that little stone. And I'm super impressed by it. And I truly am going to make it a part of my regular routine. So after this experiment, my advice would be choose products based on your needs. If your hair isn't dyed blonde, you don't need purple shampoo. If you're 17, you don't need to use products with retinol. Shop based on your needs not the trends and not what the influencers are using. Always be a critical consumer and don't feel obligated to buy things that you don't want and you don't need. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.